Hello, and welcome to another edition of Spotlighting Paradise. I'm your host, Henry White. We're Talking Biz, continuing our series of Talking Business, and we're on location at the Pioneer Valley Boxing School, right here in the valley, and we are with my man, my main man here, the owner, Coach Jada Bumpus, and um, so, how are you? I'm all right, bro. Good. Good to see you. So this brother here, Jada, has a boxing pedigree that's just out of this world. He's one of our community gems here. So we we got a lot to get to, and I'm gonna jump right into it here. Well, first of all, welcome and thanks for coming on the show. All right, that's cool. Yeah. So tell the folks out there, um, how long have you been? in the valley here here i believe it's almost 10 years correct well i've been in this building 10 years i've been teaching for 24 i've been in the game for 40, right. 43 years right. since 1969. right and when you mean in the game i mean because i got it right, in yeah. the boxer game tell the folks out there tell us a little bit about your background here because uh, you know i feel honored just to be here to be well, i came to up to you. i you know between like 69 and 75 i I had a few different people that kind of taught me stuff, and uh, but it wasn't until uh, around '76 I was introduced to a man named Val Boston, mm -hmm. and uh, you know he taught it uh, in the context of like a, a curriculum. You know he tried to teach you to learn things, certain things, and uh, you know I always knew that one day when my career was over I was going to teach because boxing wasn't really taught in a way that you really understood what you were doing. You would pick up this from this person, this from that person. Right. And I was introduced to Joe Frazier in 1978. Oh, right there. Mr. The Joe Frazier? Yeah, well, I got a joke about that. Right, okay, right, 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 Joe right. Frazier. Yeah, one exactly. Time, but One time years ago there's an old joke about that with me. Real, but, um, but you were introduced, and actually, he ended up managing well, Joe and you, I right? became close, yeah. Right. Well, he right. brought me to Philadelphia, put me up in a really nice apartment, and you know, it was a whole nice thing. Right. So. Uh, and that's how you really got your start. Well, that's when I was. That's when I really got to be around the elite trainers. Georgie Benton was my trainer, mm -hmm. um, and he was training all the top fighters around at the time, and so. But then, and, you know, his co-coach, Ralph Colbert, was, you know, it was a tandem. The two of them worked together. Right. And, and uh, you know, but later I would leave Joe and I was handled by a guy named Rabbi Lee, who uh, his son, uh, Caveman Lee, uh, was a heck of a middleweight and uh, who ended up going to the Kronk Gym at one point. But uh, then I ended up with um, Howard McCall, who was a two-time Pennsylvania State boxing coach. but. Around that time, I started hearing about people fighting under my name and stuff. That wasn't uncommon in those days. Your, your fighting name was Jada, Jada Banks. Banks, right? Right. Okay. And, so you uh, folks out there, Jada Banks here. Yeah, and so uh, from in Philly. At yeah, the I was time in too, Philly, right? right. Exactly. And then, okay. then, then uh, so then it's at some point, it, just a lot of really crazy stuff. Uh, you know, I wasn't making a lot of money, but it was still money, and <laughs> you know, oh, you yeah, needed. I had. You know, I had a little family. I had my middle child, who's my oldest daughter. She was on the way, just a couple of months away. And and I had one fight. Finally, I'd been hearing about people fighting under my name, but I was I it was uh, fighting out of the Mountain of the King Arena at 46th and Market in Philly. And uh, what happened was when I, they told me to go to Penn Station and that somebody would pick me up and take me to the fight and stuff. Well, I was walking up to the ticket booth in Penn Station Hal Greer, who worked out of St. Rena, he's mm -hmm. a basketball Hall of Famer. Right. Hal was what, running, Jada, Jada, waving his arms, and I turned and I looked. He said, man, we got to go back to the arena. Um, they don't want you to fight. I said, what? You know, I'm thrilled, I'm thinking it's money. Right. All right, so we go back to the arena, and they put me on a three-way conversation with the uh, promoter of the fight in the New York State Athletic Commission at the time. He said, and the promoter said, you know, I met you before Georgie Benton introduced me to you. You're a good little fighter. He said, we don't want you, man. I'm sorry. When I found out it was the real you, we don't want you. Wow. Like I said, I fought something under your name. I'm sorry. Wow. 
That's it. He said, so the New York State Flood Commission at the time said, well, if you know, you everyone come up here, you can erase any anything off your record you don't want. And I just, I had just had it by then. I had been going through stuff. You know, they had a, they wanted me to fight a guy in Canada. Everything on the contract was in was in English, but everything in the blank spaces was in French. <laughs> right. That's the... So it was just the final straw. With right, the thing. I could imagine. And yeah. I remember walking with Hal Greer afterwards and saying, man, I think I'm going to go back to school. Right. And Hal said, yeah, it sounds like a plan. Right. And that's what you did. Yeah, you know, I just ended that. And, well, speaking of school, and we'll get back to more of your, your boxing pedigree and your... Because I find it fascinating. I'm a... For you boxing aficionados out there and historians, this guy is a joy to talk to. I mean, he's got an opinion, obviously, on all kinds of boxing and boxes, which I love. But I really want to move forward a little bit and talk about this amazing and, uh, and awesome school, uh, boxing school that you have right here in North sure. Hampton. Let me ask you, what is the difference between training someone in boxing and, let's say, martial arts? Well, first of all, boxing is a martial art. It's the, in fact, it's the only American martial art. The rest of the stuff is, you know, mid east, uh, far east, and stuff. But so it's an American martial art. But there's a giant difference because we actually train uh, in a way that our sparring, for example, is actually fighting you just don't have an audience right whereas martial arts the type of traditional martial arts the type of things that they're doing uh, it's you know they're not actually doing them you know they make believe they ah you know they put right. a guy down and they'll make believe they kicked him between the legs and ah right that type well, of boxing thing. That boxing is happen. real right it's the real. only difference is you don't have the audience and you're not getting money or a trophy so that's that's right. the only difference between in boxes. None of the ah stuff. Right. I got but you're you. Training toward you may be training towards that's some right. type of goal or something. Well, that. you have to because it's real. Right. Exactly. You know, and we say in the game, if you can't fight drunk, you can't be a boxer. Right. And so you learn that in there. Right. And when you see somebody get up off the canvas, it's not because they've been knocked down before. They get up off the canvas because they learn in here that you don't stop unless the ref stops it or the bell stops. Right. It. That's right. why they get up. Right. So, yeah. you know, so that's, it's just, so it's different. It's real. It's definitely real. And speaking of real, I mean, it's, it's I, I get, I can imagine that boxing and the, the teachings of boxing is so much um, in relation to everyday life. Um, sure. You can take the lessons from boxing. Well, because the, ma the major thing is that uh, when you're confronting your insecurities and inadequacies, Nothing requires you to do that on a level that boxing does because it's your personal safety. Absolutely. And that's a whole nother thing. Yeah. That's a whole nother yeah. thing because, I mean, a guy can take a hit in football, but the guy that's doing the hitting doesn't have to worry about retaliation. That's true. <laughs> he might think he's tough, Ronnie Lott and these guys. They're not tough. The guy's not going to hit your back. Right. He's running from you. So you're not tough. These guys in football, you know, right, bad right. dude. You ain't yeah, bad. I think they might differ with that you guy, a little bit. Yeah, but, well, well the think, guy ain't going to hit you back. Right. So that's a giant difference. They can differ all they want. Right. They ain't going to put them hands up. So let's talk about this, uh, about the technique of what, how you teach and, and what you teach. How much of it is actual uh, about the technique and how much of it is about nurturing and, and getting people prepared for, again, in life with their confidence and their emotional stability and balance? That's a great question because, uh, you know, I, I, I deeply believe, and this is a saying that my brother, who's also an issue, who's also an educator, uh, has been saying since the 1970s, and it goes like this. The range of a student's ability is seldom as wide as the range of encouragement that he or she receives. Wow. And that's how I teach. And so I encourage my student because uh, you can do it. It's not the scolding and all the ridiculing and stuff and the, the that you the, see. The, the hollering at them. Yeah, and none of that. That right, stuff right. is not helping anybody. Right. And it might make somebody do something, but they're only doing it because of that. They don't really feel it. And, you know, 
it doesn't really apply to anything for them. Right. Uh, you know, it's to me that type is an old school type of coaching that, you know, just uh, you it's not really helping. To that I don't subscribe program. to that. My students love what they learn, right. and they're able to apply it to other things right. because of the way they learned it. Right. To me, a safe learning environment isn't more, you know, metal detectors and police. A safe learning environment is a, a place where the teacher isn't going to scold or ridicule you or your fellow students aren't going to ridicule you, where you can take a chance, right? Exactly. you know, and you take can try. Exactly. Yeah. And then that's what I say to people when they're boxing, when they're first learning, and I'll be saying to them, come on, take a chance. Take, go ahead, just right. take a chance. Exactly. Because that's, yeah. because that's not how uh, boxing coaches talk historically. Right. That's just not how they do it. Right. And, uh, yeah. Well, that's, that's a good um, practice that you have in, in, in doing that and the way you teach that. And I could see that in your, in your personality and just in conversating with you. Now, you have um, both male and female students, which that's I find right. um, very interesting. Because I think most people, when they associate boxing and this type of uh, sport, um, they think males. I've taught uh, more What's women. the difference between, is there a difference between how you would train and no, work with the females? They all learn exactly, they learn exactly the same thing. It's just that um, when you're teaching a female, uh, it's a lot easier, mm -hmm. paradoxically, because Females come well, to more you. Mature than us, no, it's not that. <laughs> no, it's just joking. that. It's just that they're not socialized right. to think they're tough, and so when they come to learn, mm -hmm. then they just do what you show them. Dudes, you have to give it all the silly macho stuff, mannerisms that they had before they walked in the door. Right. And so a female just does what you show her. It's much easier to teach. Oh, okay. Much easier. And I remember listening to Julius Irvin years ago talking about basketball. He said, if you want to see somebody play basketball, watch females play basketball because they play, now this above the rim stuff, they just play the game. Right. And females are much easier to teach. And I've taught more females, more than 700, which wow. is, you know, probably about as many as all of them put together that right. I've ever taught. I've taught a lot of, because I do it for a living. It's not Absolutely. a hobby where I, I work in the gas station and day and night I go to the boxing gym for a couple hours a week to work with some right. kids. Right, this is your life. That's Absolutely. right. Absolutely. And so I, you know, but um, yeah, I've, I've trained, uh, you know, just. Both uh, men, men and females. Men now, and females, but very shy women. And I've trained a number of karate black belts who were female. Right. Who came to me as karate belts who wanted to learn how to really rumble. So what is the hardest thing to teach someone or train someone in, in fight game? What's the hardest what's thing to teach anybody about fighting, period, is whether you punch back or not, your opponent will punch you. That is the hardest thing to teach a person. Mm -hmm. You can say that to them. I have it written up on my blackboard. And sometimes the, the, the first time a person spars, and I tell people that before they ever get to that day. The first time people spar, I will stop the sparring and have that person read that out loud. Really? That's right. Because they, <laughs> they've, they've seen it for months. Right. And now all of a sudden, they're in that situation. And I told them mm -hmm. that I'll probably stop the sparring the first time. Right. And I have to read that. And they understand. They turn it. They understand. That's what I told That's them was going to happen. That's what you told them. Right, exactly. You know? yeah. That's the hardest thing to teach people. Right. Now, you know? let me ask you this. And you, you alluded to it to some degree, talking about the male and female um, and how you, the difference between them coming in the door and training them. But as far as characteristics are concerned, um, is there a certain person that would come to you or come for training that is more prone to adapting to your style of training or to boxing in general is there a sure i mean if, I, if you like know like a tough guy come in the door well there's like nobody that. tough out here but it, but uh, like football players are excellent i've trained a number of them and and they're, they're because of the hitting aspect they're they're, they're easy to make into good fighters mm -hmm. i'm trained a couple of uh, rugby players i got one now who's really good those type of people that are, are used to the contact they're real good. Um, as far as coordination, basketball players, uh, people that play basketball, right. you know, they're, they're easy to teach yeah. in terms of, 
you know, because you have to be well coordinated. Absolutely. Because you're moving around and yeah. and all these funny angles. Right. Do but you I, have a certain age group that you deal with? Or? I start at six years old wow. and I train as old as 86. I started each of my own children. So there's at, um, actually a little life for me. And uh, oh, there's, I've right. trained a lot of people, but I, <laughs> but but uh, actually you're like about 30 percent of the people I train in your age group. Oh, oh, 30 percent. Really? Yeah. Well, a, we won't say my age group, but well, you mean it's, as far as my height and physical mature and stuff. I mean, <laughs> the, 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 it's right. about 30 percent. Yeah, really? to, yeah, it's a good por good portion. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, why don't we do this? Because and I'm I I really want to pick your uh your your brains a little bit about some some of the more uh, and I know you're in this category as well. Some of the legendary fighters of our time, um, you know, speaking like the Muhammad Ali's and the Joe Frazier's and the uh, Tommy Hearns and some of those guys. I just want to get your opinion okay. on that. Before we do that, I, if you didn't mind, if you don't mind, I'd like to kind of uh, show the folks out there uh, a little bit more about the school here, okay. and uh, maybe go hit the bag a little bit. And I believe you got some students back there to work. Yeah, we're going to work with some of them. We're going to watch them. Uh, they're going to take a little time and do a little different levels of sparring. That's good. Yeah. Why don't we do that and then? Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit more. So, folks, we're going to move to the uh, bag room. the bag room, and um, we'll be back. And uh, well, we'll see you on the other side. All right. Now, the heavy bag is the most important piece of equipment for a boxer. You know, you can. Uh, not have sparring, but at the certainly at the amateur level and the lower pro level, if you at least have a heavy bag, then you can at least uh, it's better to have sparring because it's for for you know real uh, kind of focus and stuff. But it, it you do about this builds about ten different skills, uh, patience and punching power. You move around the bag 360 degrees and you change direction so it works on your foot movement and also teaches you to use the whole ring. Just don't stand in front of a guy. Now you treat this like a person though. And you start off by giving it a hockey check, banging it with your shoulder to get it moving. You don't want to push it because that's a bad habit. You treat this like a person. If you did that like a, with a person, you'd get hit in the head, all right? Mm -hmm. Your head's open. And so you're gonna start off to give it, let it move. Now you're only going to punch it right there at that 40, at that 45 degree angle because you want the bag to move on a pivot. And you make it pivot. All right? And you change direction every so often. You don't have to punch every second. 45 degree angle. See? You punch it on those angles. And see how it maintains the pivot? Mm -hmm. And you're boxing it just like it's a person. Mm -hmm. And when you stop it, you bear hug it and slide your arms up. Because what you're doing is you're practicing when the guy gets you in the clinch, you want to lift his armpits because otherwise he'll hit you in the head. And he will do that. Okay. So we're with Evan Cren Crenshaw. Crenshaw. I get that right? Yeah. Okay, good. And um, as you can see, this guy's pretty fit here. He's been working out here at the Pioneer Valley Boxing School here. And he's going to give us a demonstration. But before you do, how has this been working out for you? Uh, they just coming to the gym in general? Absolutely. And it's, doing your uh, weight training. It's definitely a unique uh, sporting experience. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, it's more demanding than anything else I've done. I've done maybe four to five competitive sports. And this is definitely the most demanding. Right. Yeah. Overall body experience. Right. And I was going to ask you about Coach um, Bumpus there, but I'll, get, I'll let you off the hook for that right now. All right. But um, so you do your thing and show the folks out there how you train. Sure. I'm going to get out your way.
call this a matchbox, and and uh, these are the best type of rings to learn how to fight. This is 10 by 10s, exactly one quarter the size of a traditional 20 by 20 foot ring. The 20 by 20 foot ring, it makes a person be a runner or they hit and hold a lot. You got to fight when you're in a matchbox ring, and you have to have a lot of defensive skills because you don't have anywhere to go. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a lot of slipping and blocking and weaving. And you have to be really good. You're about to see it. Um, you know, you got to have skills in a, in a matchbox. And then when you find yourself in the bigger ring, more traditional ring, the other guy's like, what's well, this guy's problem? He's all over me. Because you're used to fighting a person and not hitting and holding and dancing around. Just keep your right hand up well. Do that right hand more. Okay. Do that right hand. That's right. Go the right hand. That's right. Punch hard, can't fight him. That's right. There you go, folks. <coughs> You've seen it. Some great action going on here at the Pioneer Valley Boxing right. School. From boxing to weight training, I think I'm sold on this. I'm coming <laughs> in. So we're getting ready to wrap up, but we're going to finish talking to Coach Jada uh, about some, some, some more boxing uh, things. I have some questions for him, and then we'll, uh, we'll end the show. Welcome back. We're at the Pioneer Valley Boxing School with Coach Jada Bumpus. And um, I got a couple of more questions I want to ask you. We just thank you, for one, for this wonderful uh, tour of your, your boxing school. And I'm sure the folks out there got some uh, good knowledge of what actually happens and goes on here. What's your opinion on the state of boxing right now? Because it is a new generation, it's a new era. Well, and I know, um, and Floyd Mayweather is supposed to be promoting along with 50 Cent. But they're just repeating the same thing that Bob Arum and Don King and them cats have done. Right. And, and, uh, and it's not good. You know, I teach, 95% of the people I teach, uh, they're doing it just for the skills. And they have the same skills as a professional fighter. Because that's what I teach them to be. But um, most of them don't compete. A lot of them have, you know, careers. Surgeons, the janitors have trained, so they have careers already. Absolutely. But uh, but they just they, but they can do it. They can rumble. Right. And because I don't just teach them how to box, I teach them how to fight. Because I was a legendary bouncer in Philly. Okay. And uh, you know, and I fought in the so-called red light district at 13th and Market. Right. And I bounced out of there. But in those days, you could knock people out. And the police would, would help you carry them out. Right. And that, starting in the 80s, they started bringing <laughs> cases against the 90s. They were locking them up. Right. But when you I was a bouncer. can't do that anymore. When I was a bouncer, it was different. Right. You, you exactly. tell a guy one time, because right. there ain't going to be no argument. Right. Lay them out, drag them out. There you go. But, uh, and let me just tell the folks out there, if you don't believe that this guy, I'm sure you, you can, but some of the photos in this place, I would encourage you to come by the Pioneer Valley 
boxing school here. Some of the pictures on this wall is, is unbelievable. He's got a community wall of pictures, famous folks, and then folks like yourself, where if you look at him, you can tell he was a bouncer back in the day. And what, what is the address here, the, the physical address? This is address 518 here? Pleasant Street. 518 Pleasant Street. Northampton, Massachusetts. Right downtown Northampton here. Again, I encourage you to come. Go on to the website. It is www. Westernmassboxing.com. Westernmassboxing.com. If you want to get yourself a little more fit or do a little something different than, than your normal going to the gym, this is the place to come. I really want to thank you, Coach, All right, my for, for inviting us. And, hey, um, Thanks coming. for coming. We've talked about this for, for a while now. Yeah. And I got to tell you, and just, so, just so you know, you're one of the, the, the guys that I really look forward to, to crossing paths with when I see you on the streets. You always got a ni nice, pleasant personality, always a nice guy to talk to. And um, so this is, a, this is a real pleasure to, to, to be here. And I, oh, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're doing this. Well, the pleasure's mine, I'm sure. Absolutely. So with that, I'm going to start wrapping up. I uh, want to thank the folks at Northampton Community TV, as I always do. These guys are awesome. They come yeah, they out. Good. Uh, they do a, a wonderful job. And I can't do this show without them. So I really want to give them a, a, a big thumbs up. Uh, I also want to thank you, the audience, for Turn, tuning in and viewing. Um, if you want to know more about the Spotlight in Paradise show, if you have any comments, ideas, or show ideas, feel free to email me at spotlightingparadise at gmail.com. Um, again, go on to the Pioneer Valley Boxes website, um, or you can send comments, or I encourage you to go on Northampton Community TV's website, which is northamptontv.org. Um, I'll leave you with this quote, and I'm sure you've all heard this little cliche before. What doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. Not always. Until next time on Spotlighting Paradise, peace and blessings, and keep the faith.